Hey everyone and welcome back to the B-Side, Beeblebum here and today I'm excited to go and dive a little bit deeper in a new survival game that is on the horizon named Asuka. Now before we start I want to mention that this overview is based entirely on the trailer deep dive footage available so far. I have not had a chance to play the game myself yet but from what I've seen so far there's quite a lot to be excited about. In Asuka you start your journey as a shipwrecked viking on a mysterious shore. Survival here is a constant struggle. You will have to meet your basic needs like food and water, so you will have to spend your days foraging to keep your hunger and thirst at bay. At night, a simple camp might offer you some respite, but it won't protect you from the dangers lurking in the shadows. This game sets up to be a tough, immersive environment where every decision matters. Now, judging by the trailer, the graphics in this game look really nice. The world of Asuka is really visually captivating. They have nice, detailed environments and they do remind me a little bit of the world of Enshrouded. One of the standout features in Asuka is the interaction with the NPC villagers. These aren't just mindless followers. They have their own character traits and make their decisions based on them. So this mechanic could add a lot of depth to the gameplay and keeps things interesting every time you play. For instance, each villager has unique strengths and weaknesses. Björn, who prefers to work outside during daylight, might prefer farming, while Freya, who is a night owl, could be ideal for guard duty. This dynamic could lead to a lot of strategic planning and replayability. Now, you guys know my channel to be a base building channel, or at least I do spend a lot of time base building in the games that I play. And from what the trailer shows, it appears that building an Aska might be somewhat more limited compared to the other games I've been playing so far. So instead of constructing your village wall by wall or brick by brick, it seems you'll be placing predetermined structures. Or your NPC villagers will be building structures depending on their character or their occupation. Now, I'm not entirely sure if this is the way building will work in this game, but it does look like that. Now, if you are a base builder and that is what you're looking for, this might limit your creativity to some extent. But it does suggest that this game is more focused on strategy and efficiency. The game also says that it is about survival and management. So I think that is going to be the focus of this game. It won't be a base building game as you might expect. But we will get more details about this and how this works when the demo comes available. Personally, Asuka has piqued my interest quite a bit, not just for its gameplay mechanics, but mainly for the setting and the story. The mythical world of Vikings, which is rich in lore and epic tales, is incredibly appealing to me. The narrative of reuniting a lost tribe and surviving in a harsh, uh, god-touched land is something that resonates deeply with my game style. It's these storytelling elements woven into this mythical Viking backdrop that really draws me in, and I'm eager to explore this world, uncover its sequence, and experience the uh, journey it promises. Now, survival in Asuka is not just about you. It is about ensuring the well-being of your entire tribe. You'll need to provide for their basic needs, food, warmth, and safety. If you fail to keep them fed and protected, they might leave the tribe, or even worse, they might perish. As the leader, you'll have to assign tasks wisely, matching each villager to the roles that suits their strengths, and this level of management can add a lot of depth to the game, making every decision feel significant. Additionally, you can choose to stay within the safety of your community, focusing on building and harvesting, while sending your villagers to handle the threats. Or, alternatively, you can take the lead in battles and exploration and letting your tribe manage the base in your absence. This flexibility allows you to tailor the gameplay to your preferred style, whether you enjoy hands-on action or strategic oversight. Another intriguing aspect of Asuka is the approach to death and revival. If you fall in battle, you will be faced with a tough choice. You can either be reborn in a weakened state or revive yourself at full strength by sacrificing a valued tribe member. This mechanic adds a layer of strategy and a bit of an emotional weight to the game, as every death will have meaningful consequences. To overcome the toughest challenges in Asuka, you need to advance your buildings and techniques. Better equipment and stronger defenses will be crucial to protect your villagers and fend off threats. Additionally, you can tame fierce beasts which can serve as a valuable companion in battle or just in life. I'm assuming these beasts will aid you in combat, providing support and adding another layer of strategy to your encounters. So yeah, the world of Ashka seems to be filled with both promise and evil. Uh, surviving alone is a daunting task, but with the support of your tribe, 
or potentially the help of other players because this game has co-op for four players, you can face whatever challenges the gods throw at you. Together you'll forge ahead and cover the secrets of these untamed lands. Aska is set to release on Steam on the 20th of June and early access. You can wishlist it now and you can even check out the demo during Steam's Open World Survival Craft Fest and Steam Next Fest. During these events, player can access a free 5-hour demo of the game. You can play it solo or with 4 players and multiplayer and at the end of the demo you will receive a score. Then you can compare that score with your friends and then try to improve by playing again. I hope this was informative. I want to thank you so much for watching and I will see you again next time. This was Beeblebum. Goodbye for now.